We are the seventh generation. We are responsible for the future of the Red Lake Nation. We have much to learn if we are to be the leaders of tomorrow. So we look to those around us for help and guidance. Seventh generation is the, the young people of today. They're the ones who are um, responsible for bringing back the culture and a lot of the things that have faded away from us. You know? I think that now, as opposed to my generation, um, the younger people of today are going to know a, a lot more about our culture and our language. And a seventh generation, to me, is uh, my younger brothers and sisters, uh, my children. They're the fortunate ones who I can say in my family have been born into that prophecy of knowing and understanding from birth, tradition, culture, values, practicing uh, the dance, understanding the dance, the circle, the drum. And that's the generation that is referenced when we speak of the seventh generation. Seventh generation, we got to keep our traditions alive and culture. Like we got to hold on to what they fought for for so many years. Like the um, the generations before us, we got to keep what they fought for, what they kept. We listen to the land and to our Great Lake. Our land is the most important piece of our traditions. We use the land for its resources, but we also look to it for our teachings. They provide food for our community to live and prosper. They also teach us many things we must deal with in life. As our teacher and our mother, we listen to their cries and respect what we are offered. This is the land we fought over. This is like the land we pretty much lived off of for our last generations goes with keeping our traditions and our culture. This is like part of our culture, this land. It's like what we're known for. Red Lake Nation is different than all other Indian nations because of the fact that we never went for allotment. And so we are the keepers of the original view of the land as it was before contact and that is that our land is held in common that no one can own the land no one owns mother earth our land is special our reservation is special because a long time ago our seven chiefs they didn't give up our land because they were thinking of us now and how it would be like in the future being part of a, uh, an established nation within a nation, I, I feel that uh, we can only get stronger. And the stronger we get, uh, the better chance our younger brothers and sisters have in the long run, because it brings back more and more culture. What we need to do is establish our own economy where we can sustain ourselves economically. And that's easier said than done. We have to very consider very carefully as to exactly how much are we going to trade off for economics versus uh, retaining some of the culture and tradition that's, that's tied to the land with the resources that's, that's being, uh, that's being uh, taken away for, for economic purposes. Uh, fishing, that's probably been the worst it's ever been. And I think we got to quit fishing for a while five years so we could have fish for our children and stuff. You gotta look at economics and jobs versus uh, the environment, protecting the environment. So it's a struggle and with like on the reservation, we're looking at what, over 60% unemployment. So people gotta work and they gotta make a living. But how do you protect the environment too? So it's a tough question that we're struggling with now and definitely the pendulum is swinging over to the point of protecting the environment and long-term, you know, protecting the resource. The lake, to me, has feelings. 
know, that's what I was told, you know, when you go look at the lake, you know, it has feelings, it can be happy. And when you go out there on a sunny day, you know, it's real calm in the morning, the lake is happy, but, all, but it, all, it can also get vicious. You know, the lake can be vicious at times. Sometimes you go look up out on a cliffs by Red Lake, and you can look on the lake and you can, you can just tell the feelings of the lake, it can be mean. Which, when I know the lake is mean, or the lake is mad, that's when I put out tobacco and say a prayer to the lake because I gotta, I gotta respect the lake when it gets mad too. And I gotta respect the lake when it's happy. You know, I draw my strength now from the pristine land that we have here in Red Lake. We don't have polluted air, you know. And it saddens me, as well as a lot of other people, that the fish are no longer as plentiful as they once were. We've seen that, that the lake um, has been overfished. I think many people are questioning the logging that's going on and if it's um, sensible and rational, um, if it's being properly, properly managed because um, we are the stewards of our land and that is, you know, as I said, our greatest wealth. I think we need to recycle. We need to stop cutting down all our trees, limit people to what they take, and everybody needs to put back into the earth what they take. You're seeing probably a new generation of leadership that, that has to be very cognizant and, very, and recognize very much that um, for us to survive as a people, we're going to have to be able to take care of ourselves and by, by, by means of uh, uh, economic development, as, as well as, as balancing uh, the, the culture. Like the land, we listen to our elders. We respect them because they are the gateway to our traditions and our language. We dedicate ourselves to learn the knowledge they have to share. They teach us respect for the land and respect for all others. They teach us about our language, how it was lost, and how we can get it back. The time when I was going to school there, we weren't allowed to speak our language. If, if, if they caught us uh, speaking our Ojibwe, they would punish, punish us. Either the, what they used to do is uh, take, take a ruler and uh, he, 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 he hit your back of your hand and your fingers boys to hurt. Sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, the principal will spank, spank uh, older kids when they, when they, when they, when they sp spoke their own language. That's, that's your first, first language, uh, Ojibwe. I was scared being in there. I was just a little girl and I, I just, uh, I just, uh, did everything what they told us to, and we didn't know how to talk English. Mm -hmm. they, they, sometimes they won't even 